So today we got a whole bunch of Japanese retailer pre-order images. What these are essentially are Japanese retailers and different companies are sent sometimes little images to let them know that certain items will be going up for pre-order for their businesses and or establishments. And we get these little blurry images of what potentially this brand new product could be. They're usually not full crazy high res images because let's be real, the companies just want to know how much is it going to cost and uh, when is it going to come out? And that's it. They don't care about the nitty gritty detail like we do, but we're going to break it down, make sense of what we can from these images. We got two masterpieces and one Beast Wars two pack to be excited about. So let's jump into it and break it down here on the Transformers Slag podcast. And the first one we got is from the Beast Wars again set. Uh, we've had three of these already, and now we have a fourth. These sets are kind of uh, taking those kingdom molds, giving them premium finishes, nice repaints, make them as show accurate as possible, giving them, giving them a little bit of an homage to the 1997 Japanese Beast Wars 2-pack boxes and sending them off their way. And today we got a fantastic one. This one is an homage going all the way back to 1997 with the VS-08 Deep Forest Showdown back in the day. This was the Tigatron versus Black Widow 2-pack, a.k.a. Tigatron versus Black Arachnia. Uh, this is probably going to be numbered uh, BWVS04, judging by just what has come out up to this point. And uh, looks really good. Looks really good. Uh, the differences between the Tigatron and the one that we got in Kingdom here in the West, uh, really it just has to do with the, the fur of the actual Tiger mode itself. We got more of a kind of a dirty, you know, beigey kind of fur in some areas. This is going for the pure white color, kind of like what the original... Japanese Tigatron toy was like too. They had a very pure white version to ours that was more beige. So they're going with that. The tail of the tiger has its much more stripe kind of pattern going on where I, ours was kind of all over the place and messy a little bit. Uh, and all the blue plastic that's in the robot mode is now going to be more of a show accurate metallic blue. And hopefully, I mean, it hasn't happened to mine yet, but hopefully also avoids a lot of yellowing that the Tigatron mold suffers from, at least in the Western version. So this is a fantastic upgrade from that Tigatron version. Looks really good. Uh, very excited about this one. The Black Arachnia, while it might not be obvious from the naked eye, there is quite a bit going on with this one. The first one that's the most obvious being that of her spider legs. So people who own the original Black Arachnia, it's a fantastic mold. Uh, but one of the big flaws that a lot of people pointed out is because of the way the gang molding was done and how the figure was put together to keep the budget, uh, the spider legs had to stay a black color scheme for the mold sprue. And as a result, you know, it didn't really match how it looked in the animation model where she had more of this copper kind of uh, bronzes kind of uh, spider legs. What some people were doing, I was seeing, is they picked up the toy accurate buzzworthy bumblebee Black Arachnia from that Worlds Collide 2-pack there, uh, excuse me, 4-pack, and they would swap the legs from that one. Well, now you don't have to do that anymore because this one comes packed in with the proper colored legs. I believe they're going to be painted in at this point, or they're going to have to be a whole new different mold sprue together because this is a premium price point. The other differences that I can notice from the naked eye from these images is they actually did the correct coloring for her lower legs. They're done in the more coppery kind of color there too in robot mode. And even the knee joints, which were originally molded in black, uh, are now kind of like a gold kind of plastic, hopefully not a GPS gold kind of plastic. So again, matching more how the animation model looks just with those fine little tuned areas. I'm pretty sure there's deeper detail in the way that the, the paint is done on her claws and stuff, but it's kind of hard to tell with these images. They're not very large, but I do appreciate how the final product looks. And if you didn't get the masterpiece Black Arachne or Tigatron, like I've said before, these guys are like mini masterpieces and they are fine additions. How much is it going to cost? Well, it's a Voyager and it's a deluxe class based on previous Voyager and deluxe classes that we've got through this Beast Wars Again line, uh, like the, the Tigatron Scorponok one that we got before that. That was the Stubborn Confrontation 2-pack. That was uh, 9,900 yen and Hasbro Pulse asked, I believe, $70 for it. So probably expect 70 bucks for this one too. But when you think about what the current MSRP is for a lot of deluxes and Voyagers today in retail plus taxes, it almost comes to about the same price and you're getting a premium paid scheme and probably the best version of these molds we'll ever see. So very excited about this. And the box is probably going to be an homage to the original. It's going to have that cool little packaging too. 
I'm very excited. Yet again, another pre-order that's probably going to happen 100% on, on my end for sure. Looks really good. Uh, the pre-order date for these that they have listed for it is June 5th, but that's going to be the pre-orders for all of these. So stay tuned for that on the Transformer Swag podcast. The next one, we got two masterpieces. The first one we're going to jump into is probably one that we were expecting at some point or another. When we got the MP56 Trailbreaker last year, we were like, well, it's only a matter of time now before they do a hoist, repaint and retool it. And well, we got an MP hoist today. We don't know what number he's going to be. Uh, I mean, the only other one that we don't really know about thus far is the Cliff Jumper, which is still in limbo. So either Cliff Jumper is going to be MP58 or this hoist is going to be MP58 because so far this year, uh, from the G1 kind of masterpieces, we had Dark Amber, Amber Lyo Prime, which is MP48+. Plus. We have the Jetfire, was 57. And then we had uh, the Dia Burnout, again, a 53+. plus. So not a lot of G1 stuff outside of, obviously, the, the train bots, but those are a separate category with the MPG and, of course, the movie stuff, MPM. Anyways, so let's jump into uh, MP Hoist here. A lot of cool stuff going on, a lot of extra parts and pieces. Very, very screen accurate. Again, taking that trail breaker mold and molding it to look like that Fleuro Deary design and how different it was from the trail breaker design. I think it looks fantastic. The extra accessories that are included with this one, there's some similarities to that of the trail breaker in that it comes with a show accurate uh, front end for the alt mode of the Toyota uh, Hilux pickup truck, but it also has a toy accurate version and a show, show accurate version. So you could swap between the two, just like Trailbreaker had interchangeable faces again, like the Trailbreaker had and uh, a whole bunch of other stuff that, you know, some of it I'm going to be taking a guesses because it is a blurry image clearly looks like it has the alien monster mask from season two of hoist goes to Hollywood uh, that was similar to like what the MP39 Sunstreaker had. Uh, sadly, the MP25 tracks didn't come with that. Maybe a future, if they ever do tracks again, they'll include that face mask. And if we ever get a Masterpiece Warpath or Power Glide, that might happen too. So he also comes with that little mask there. So you could have that him and Sunstreaker doing their thing with the ho hoist goes to Hollywood. Uh, he also has a whole bunch of tools. It looks like it's the tools from uh, Season 2's Desertion of the Dinobots. And I believe also the Master Builder had the, that wrench in it also. So there's some tools there from that. We also get, and this is like a little bit of a, a deep cut, we have the uh, rock removing crane accessory, which was used in one moment in the season two episode, Auto Berserk. So that's a nice touch. You could do that with uh, with uh, Grapple there. He's also came with that. And even the Kingdom version came with that too. So uh, pretty cool. And then, of course, we have this odd accessory. I can't make it out. I'm taking a guess that it's either the solar power tower from Season 2's The Master Builder, like an accessory from it, or it's just a blast accessory. It's probably just a blast accessory, but the similarities in the shape are uncanny. There's probably some other stuff I'm missing here, but again, these are very blurry retail pre-order images, so I'm just basing it off of what I'm seeing here. But he looks really, really good. Uh, how much is he going to cost? Well, if it's similar to his repaint brother in Trailbreaker, I'm thinking $149.99 like it was on Hasbro Pulse. So that's my guess. I'm sticking with it. But uh, I think he looks really good. Looks really, really good. Show accurate. And you get yet another hoist. And the last one we're going to cover here, the, ne the final member of the MPG. We got MPG 06. Kai N, the final member of Raiden. The key, a key final member too, because he actually makes up the lower torso. So if you've been collecting these MPGs up to this point, you weren't even able to kind of have a half assembled team kind of waiting. He was, he's literally the centerpiece that's keeping it all together. So he's here now. He's the DE10 diesel locomotive. Also is going to have just like the hoist. It's all going to be going up on pre-order on the 5th of June coming up. So pretty hype with that. Has the typical stuff he's going to come with, the gun, the accessories, the train track pieces. He's going to combine price. This one, it's hard to say. Each individual member has had different prices depending on what he comes with. But on average, it's been $144.99 between that and $159.99. Again, certain members were $147.99. Certain members were $145.99. Just based on, oh, this one came with a sword. This one came with a headpiece. So it's hard to say what he's going to cost. 
uh, designed by Kojin Ono, the original, and this one here today, still designed by Kojin Ono. I always love that nice touch. Along with Dai Ono, no relation, uh, who is one of the head uh, dudes at the Tomix train division at Tomi. So pretty cool. Dig it also. A lot of really good pre-orders drop into, to, well, not today, but in a few days from uh, Takara Tomi. Really nice stuff. Let me know what you think. We're going to be jumping into the Transformer Slag podcast live stream tomorrow, Saturday, 8 p.m. Eastern Center Time. Be sure to tune in for that. We'll talk about a whole bunch of new Transformer stuff. A lot of news, a lot of excitement and everything like that. Some big reveals, too. So stay tuned for that also. Big reveal also for San Diego Comic-Con stuff exclusives. So stay tuned for that. And we'll talk again here on the Transformer Slag podcast. And I'll see you tomorrow.